I hope you guys like that. That's a little bit of sign language for you. And welcome back to my channel. And today, as if you guys didn't understand sign language, we are going to learn about Helen Keller. It's been my kind of a new series I'm going to try to put on my channel. I hope you guys will like it. Um, we're going to talk about people with disabilities that overcame their disabilities and also um, made a difference in the world for either with you know dis you know for anybody with disabilities. Um, and also it's going to be either it can be a real life person or it can be a fictional character because sometimes people get ideas from fictional books like characters and stuff that had disabilities. It kind of gets your mind working because it's even that author got you to start thinking like if you had a disability thinking like well if this character in this thing in this book can make overcome something why can't I overcome something so we're gonna kind of I'm gonna kind of try to do a little bit of people with disabilities no matter what kind of disabilities they have and put them in the light and to show that they were the best people you know that helped change them to become people like us in the normal society and so, and today is Helen Keller's day because so far she's kind of like the main, in some ways, the main person that started the movement, like really movement, I guess. You know, I know it's hard to say, but as I could say, um, Helen Keller is really awesome person. I enjoyed her. I mean, I loved her from the first time I saw, like I learned about her actually. And she is like the best thing in the world people don't some people do know about it because her stuff became more you know known because she has a play about her she has a movie about her she has a lot about her but you know I thought for people that don't necessarily know anything of really really about her we're gonna I'm gonna at least give you an insight on Helen Keller's life so sit back enjoy maybe have a snack maybe have a drink because this could be a nice little history lesson so let's get started guys um, Helen Keller was born June 27 1880 she was a healthy baby girl you know normal as ever she you know basically what you would probably consider like with anybody's kids you think it's like the perfect baby in the world you know with anybody you know having a kid I mean it's kind of a given because it's your kid so <laughs> you think you know nothing's wrong but but she was a really you know happy baby she um, at six months old she learned to talk which that's kind of amazing like she you know gave out words and stuff and by one years old she was walking so you consider she was so you're asking me what's the difference why does she have why does she has a disability good question right well at age two she um, contracted um, a fever but people think it's either like she had meningitis or I think it was the scarlet fever but they call it like it was like just a fever to them back in the 1880s so and she overcame it but it left her deaf and blind so let's just say at two years old she was deaf and blind so can you imagine being a two-year-old or just being a kid in general with both both disabilities of being blind and deaf that would be hard you couldn't communicate with the world and like I and I think with that fever too it her um, speech got messed up too I'm assuming because she like oh well not really messed up but she just didn't know how to explain I, guess, I don't know I think when you're at two you know because I think it's about like two or three I, I don't quote me on this I but around that time that's when you start making sentences so I don't know if any of that, you know, because since she was just so basically out of the world, you know, from everybody, like she didn't know how to communicate with anybody, you know, she could probably say something, but she couldn't, because when we talk, guys, we can hear our, kind of like hear our voices. So like if you cover your ears and start talking, it sounds so like you could just, it'd be hard, you know, so you're not for sure if you're sounding right or not, you know, or even if you're yelling or, you know, stuff like that. Well. Just because of that, she became a very unruly child. So she got, you know, she she was basically running the household because, you know, of her mother and father because they didn't know how to um, to really communicate with her to show her discipline, you know, all that stuff, discipline and stuff. So they were like really on their wit's end with her. 
until about, um, let's see, when she was some years old, that's when help came, arrived. And that's when her lifelong friend, Ann Sullivan, came into her life and really teached her how to communicate with the world. So it was a very long process. It wasn't just like, oh, a snap, she knows how to communicate. It took Ann Sullivan, all her patience and stuff, to teach this child how to communicate with the world. And, you know, and at one point, too, you know, because it was so bad at the household, because the parents, like, she knew, like, Ann, oh, not Ann, but uh, Helen knew how to control her parents, like, to give, like, make her make them have pity on her well ann sullivan sat there and said you don't need to have pity on her she needs to learn discipline like she can't just give get away with stuff like you would see if you ever guys watch i think it's the um oh what's that movie called now uh, i'll put it down here if i can't remember but in that you see her like ruling everything she just basically didn't ever sat down at a table with any sore or nothing she would walk around her table and eat off of her mom and dad's plate even her brother i think there was a brother that lived with her i'm not for sure you know it was just like a norm well and ann sullivan sullivan's like this is not right she can learn to sit down at a table with her own plate and eat with a fork or spoon well at one point she told everybody to leave the room and it took a good process of like two to three so from like breakfast until lunch it took that long just to get her to at least eat off of a plate with a fork and fork or spoon so it was going to be a long process and then Anne eventually sat there and said you know what guys we need to just have our own space without you guys near at all so Anne found uh, a little like little co garden cottage on their property because um her fa uh, Aunt helen's father owned a plantation so they made it sound like you know like take helen for a ride she won't know where she's going so make her feel like she's in a different town even though she's still on the same property so the parents did that, brought her in, and then Anne specifically said, I need you guys to leave and never show your presence. So they did that, and it took, and they had, like, I think agreement about, like, it took about two weeks that she had to do something. Well, she did get some stuff done, like, Anne could, I mean, Helen could sit there at a table with, you know, all that, you know, with a fork, spoon, whatever, you know, we have the manners. But she still could not grasp of words going with the object it took a while but like um and also and this is how she communicated with her um this is how um ann communicated with helen trying to show her so you have an object i don't know if i have one um let's see i want to show you guys what i mean guys so you have this i know it's a, not what they had back in the 1880s so you would have this, which you would consider a doll, right? So yeah. So there was actually a doll doll, and um, put this down. So you show the the the, 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 the she'll say the object. She have her hand placed on the object, saying, and but then she'll go on her palm like this and go D O L L doll, and then put her hand back on the object, saying that's doll. So that was like her first word she learned. So but that's how she learned was. Having her hand and having D O L L. So that's how it worked. But it took a lot. It did it, I mean Helen wasn't grasping that until one magical day when um she was trying to act up again. Like, you know, like you know how childs are with tantrums, you know, or let their parents are gonna try to test them. See if they still will give in to her. Because that's when they came back to the big house and they were having a nice dinner and all that. And but she started being unrelated, so she threw, she dumped the um, water on Anne, but Anne, you know, didn't do anything, but people were like, this is, you know, the parents were all going off on the line on her, but she says, you know, and they're like, where are you taking her? She's like, well, she's going to learn how to fill, the, we're, we're going to refill this pitcher. So they went out to the pump, you know, and she was doing her thing and saying that, but then all of a sudden, it was like a click of a light bulb, Helen got the grasp of water, because she felt the water, and then she actually spilled it. And that was so amazing. And on that particular day, she learned 30 words in just one day. So you can say she overcome everything. So after all that, Anne became her permanent partner. Not like in a love way, you guys, so don't, don't go there. But like a partner to help her with everything. 
aunt went with her to school. She graduated from high school. Well, probably what we call high school, but it's probably called something else back in that time period. But she did that, and she actually did go to college, guys. What an amazing thing that um, Helen got to do. She graduated from college with Anne's help, you know, because Anne helped her with her lessons, you know, telling her how to do stuff. So it was really kind of a cool thing. And then after the fact of college, she, I don't know if it was during college or after college, but she did write her own autobiography. She learned how to use a typewriter, which is really kind of cool, guys. I think that's like awesome. So with her that, that was so cool. She wrote her autobiography. And then she also, after the fact she graduated from college, she um, helped co-founded the, um, I had to look at it up, guys, because um, the American Civil Liberties Union, which helps with people with disabilities and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, we, we had like a lot with her. And, you know, and so this partnership with um, Anne and Helen were so, for 49 years, they were a good partnership until uh, I think it was when what was this in 1930 until 1936 and Sullivan um, passed away and um, it really kind of you know it was a big thing but then there was this one person named Polly I think it's Polly Polly Thompson who was the secretary for Anne and um, Helen for so many years became her partner up until um, up until 1961 um, Helen started to um, go ill. She started having strokes and stuff, and so she ended up um, um, staying at her Connecticut home. She lived in Connecticut for the remainder of her life. And so she received a lot of honors through her lifetime and rewards and all that because of what her courage and everything, because she talked about it all the time about, you know, people with disabilities to, you know, have, have rights. But with the help of um, Eleanor Roosevelt, that was made possible. And so um, so she had the help of the uh, First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt to help pass a law about having people with disabilities have some rights. You know, that they're people too, and they're not just, you know, because back in those days, people were in asylums. And if you ever guys ever looked at an asylum back in the days, they were the worst places to be for people with disability. And most of those people with disabilities were smart. So I guarantee you there was people with autism back in those times and people didn't know how to handle it. So, um, so it was kind of like, they were probably the smart ones out there, but, but they could not know how to communicate. So when people did that back in the day, they were the worst places. They treated them like, like they were animals. They weren't people. So basically, I mean, the silence were still around, but the people got a little bit more of a rights. Like they were treated a little bit better. But I mean, there was still some stuff, you know, people still did. But all in all, guys, if you ever, ever looked up on asylum, and I guarantee you, you would be more open eyed to how they were treated, even though they were not doing, even if they were not doing anything wrong. Or if they did act out, it's because of, you know, they don't know how to communicate with you. So I suggest you guys take your time with people in your own community, with people with disabilities. Give them the time of day. Give them, like, um, treat them as, an, as a person. Don't treat them as, like, oh, they have a disease and you're going to catch it. You can't catch a, a, a people with disability, like anything with a person has a disability. It's not contagious. They just want to be, like, you know, they want to be part of this world. They don't want to feel like they are... But, you know, out, you know, special or anything. So please, guys, and I really do appreciate this if you just take the time and get to know that person. You know, learn something. Learn sign language. Like, I'm learning sign language. Learn, you know, how to communicate. Or just take the time to sit there and listen to that person. It might take them a while to talk to you. Like, it'll take them a while to get all their sentences out. But they want to feel like a part of this world. Not just to be like, oh... They have disabilities, so they're in their own little category. Yeah, they have, you know, laws against for them, but it's still like, guys, they still want to be part of the society. So please, I encourage you guys to take time in your day or, you know, or any day you can have and um, just to get to know somebody in your community that has a disability or go help at a local place where, you know, they have people with disabilities, you know. Just take the time. That's all I ask. That's all they want is just to feel 
accepted into the society. So there's my spiel, so <laughs> let's get back to it. But eventually, um, Helen died on June 1st, 1968, just a few weeks off of her 88th birthday. But, you know, her legacy is still lived today. You still know about her. If you actually, um, in, I think it was in the 1950s, they actually, yeah, 1957, it's called the Miracle Workout. There's that word. <laughs> that was the um, TV series they did in 1957 called the Miracle Worker, which talked about her life and everything. And then a year later, it became a Broadway play, which did a really good job. Basically, they got the TV series and the Broadway play from her autobiography she wrote about herself. So, I suggest, guys, to either, either go look, if there's a play that anybody in your community does of The Miracle Worker, go check it. Go check it out. It's worth it. Or, if there's nothing like that, I suggest to check out the TV, the TV movie, or just there's a movie, too, about it, and stuff like that. Any movie about Helen Keller, I guarantee you guys, it will open your eyes on how, how difficult it was for Helen to at least communicate with the world. So, but... As an all in all, guys, this is going to be my new series. I hope you guys will enjoy it. I will try to keep up with, try to get more out there of people with disabilities that have changed the world or they just did something awesome. But if you have anybody you want me to, to the, like, least look at or anything, if I maybe not know, I know a lot because I do work with people with disabilities, guys. So I'm a very advocate for people with disabilities. So I should encourage you guys to, to be advocates because. If all in all, guys, if anything happens, they get the worst end of everything. So I suggest, please, fight for your people with disabilities because they do want to be accepted. They want to be part. And if we don't, they don't get the help they need, then that's when everything goes down the drain. So I suggest, please be an advocate. It's nice to have some people to advocate for. There's not a lot of voices out there. We could all do so much if everybody has a voice. So... I guys, I hope you like this video, so please and like and share this video, and please subscribe. And if you do subscribe, hit the bell down below to know when I post. I at least post once a week, and my new schedule, and also for that, my new schedule is I'm going to try to adhere to this, and if I don't, I have somebody who's going to probably yell at me for it, but um, I'm going to try to post every Thursday for every week, so let's see if I can keep that up, and hopefully I can keep that schedule, so... So yeah, guys, so every Thursday that you expect at least a video, I'm at least going to try to adhere to that. So anyways, guys, this is it for me officially. And just all remember, you guys are all a book and it's still being written. So I'll see you guys all next time.